Uh, anyway, so basically, right now, okay, so right now, the simple things that you need to learn for your head shape is usually just putting two circles like this. By the way, this is um, a three-fourth angle since that's the easiest and most beginner thing to do. Some people mistake it for the front-facing face, but in my opinion, three-fourths mm -hmm. are a lot better um, so make sure that if you're a beginner, if you're kind of new to this, in my opinion, three-fourths are easier to understand rather than, let's say, front-facing, where you may need a symmetrical tool if you're in traditional art. So if you have a digital program that doesn't support a ruler, then definitely three-fourths is the way to go. Um, so right here, we just have two circles. So what I said in my past tutorial was that um, I always make a line going kind of vertical like this vertical with like a little curve on the top to represent the forehead and then right here I'll make another line going horizontally kind of curved as well to represent you know the cheeks and where the eyes and the nose and everything else goes it also gives a nice area where you can put the ears as well as the other features so we'll just merge these together so right now we have this um, generally, my rule of thumb is usually just following the guideline because usually that's how, you know, that's usually how guidelines help you. You're supposed to follow them. But make sure not to follow them all the time. Otherwise, it might make your drawing look stiff and that's not something you would like to happen. So up here, we'll just do the basic forehead shape. And then right here, as you can tell, where like these little, these two circles kind of, kind of connect here or kind of cross, usually that that kind of shows where the cheek is that's why i kind of have you know that little dip there so what i just do is kind of make the cheeks round like that so generally that's usually how i would do three fourths um if it's not in the right angle just always rotate it yes cheeky cheeks basically remember that remember that that's very important anyway so up here to the jawline usually um what i would like to do but I feel like this is a more stylistic choice. But something I would like to do or implement um, with my heads is adding like this little little line going upwards. It's basically like a part of the bone of the jaw that connects to the ear. Usually it's more of like straight for girls like this. And for guys it has that line. But if you feel the bottom of your ear right now, you can kind of feel that jaw line right there. That's why I like putting that in. Um, the horizontal line is important, like I said earlier, mainly because that shows us where the ear is supposed to be. Usually the horizontal line, or like, or like the ear I mean, is placed in the middle of the horizontal line, like this. See how it's like in the middle of the ear, like that? It's not, it's not above it, it's not beneath it, it's just in the center. That's usually where um, it's supposed to be, in my opinion. Um, anyway discover the rest of the skull like that so now what you have is a perfect three-fourth head it's a very simple task that you could easily do it's very easy to practice if you're a beginner artist um if you draw a realistic or semi-realistic size of the ears and the nose is, um is the nose to the eyebrow uh but i'm not sure about the realistic and semi-realistic stuff you have to ask CP for that in his next class. He plans on teaching monthly, but that's not a confirmed statement from him yet. He just said that he'll, he'll think about it. He did mention it. So 
just wanted to put that out there for anyone who wants to try semi-realism painting or realism just in case but right now we're focusing on the more anime side of art so that i just want to keep that as a reminder that i'm not a realism artist cartoonist or semi-realism artist i'm just here to teach the beginner basics of anime artwork so right here like i said three-fourth angle you can already um probably put where the eyes and the nose are usually where i put them the nose is always right here kind of slanted to the right or to the left depending on where your character is looking from it should never be facing forward if it's a three-fourth angle um for the mouth it's usually just underneath here for the eyes it's usually just two circles for me like this it might look creepy, but it's a good way for you to tell where they would be. Because otherwise, without these guidelines, you wouldn't really understand them properly. Um, I got a DM from someone. Uh, I, I can appreciate you teaching everyone in high school. Uh, no problem, no problem. I, I, I do it weekly, so I try my best to do it weekly. I'll, I'll still be teaching tomorrow. So, yeah. So, anyway, now that you got that done, you can kind of make this low opacity. Um... You can also start lining where the eyes are and the features. So let's say we have the guideline. Um, just put like, I'd say curves upwards for the anime eyes like this. Usually anime eyes are generally the same style in my opinion. Maybe it kind of varies just a bit with the eyelashes or how the pupils are drawn. But generally they follow the same fundamental of, for example, girls having more cheerful eye eyes like this. If it's more serious, they'd have kind of more triangular eyes like this. So that's very that's basically the basics of how anime eyes work. Um, anyway, despite that, we're gonna be doing kind of more like um, like I guess a neutral expression of a girl for now. But then I kind of wanna also use it for the guy hairstyle. So you'll just have to keep in mind about that one. Um, so right now, this is following the same. Um, the same thing I said earlier, with usually the anime eyes being more curved for, you know, for the generic anime art style. Uh, something like this. So that that's just following the guidelines that I put down. So this is a very good representation of why guidelines are, are important. So right now, what we have is this. So, like I said, I didn't follow the guidelines like... Um, completely. If I did, it's probably not going to look right. It's just there to help you understand where you could put the lines and for you to kind of eyeball where it's supposed to be. It also helps you kind of develop the style that you want, in my opinion. I personally still use guidelines. I think it's a good idea to use guidelines. Um, it's very important to use them, in my opinion. So just keep that in mind that I think even professional artists I've seen time uh, time lapses. They still use guidelines in majority of their drawings, especially in the face, because the face is usually what's seen the most in artworks. So that's something you should keep in mind when you're doing final illustrations. Um, that usually has all the emotions and everything else. So let's just give her eyebrows. Usually eyebrows are not that difficult. Just put two curved lines on top of the eyes. Anti-construction thingy thingy. I'm not sure what anti-construction is. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure what anti construction is. I'll probably research that later. But generally, yeah. So that's usually why I would always suggest using guidelines. So right now we have this. So I'm a bit lazy to do the line art. So right now, since it's already pretty much solid, I'll just clean it up a bit and I'll use it as line art. So right now we have this head. And since I didn't want to make any kind of like let's say materials for the class today because i thought it would be a good learning experience if everyone kind of understands how i draw heads and how i draw or how i color skin so this is another tutorial basically of how i color skin usually i say i always say that oh i can't really teach you how to color because i don't have a coherent style on how to color skin but you should, or, or how the color in general, but for skin, I generally have a good understanding of what my style wants to kind of be for skin. So something that I generally do, if you're using clipping layers, for example, on your program, I usually just make it a complete gray base and color it later on. When you say clipping layers, usually what I mean is by, let's say this is the gray base, 
and then you make another layer then you should have something called clipping layer or clipping mask what about the the top eyelids um top eyelids are really actually a stylistic choice if you want top eyelids you could put them like this personally i would do that in my in my regular art styles so sorry if i was like kind of kind of not there earlier but anyway back to clipping mask so if you have a gray base then you make another layer over it you should have an option where it says clipping mask or clipping layer or clipping group if you're on paint tool side when you press that it it kind of makes an arrow pointing downwards to a certain layer so i'll make another layer above it so if you if you draw on the layer without clipping mask you can see that it kind of goes over the line but then if you draw on a layer with clipping mask then the gray area is the only area you're going to color so that's very important if you're you're a beginner in digital art um if you're planning to take a digital program then you should definitely keep that in mind because it saves you lots of time with coloring and shading personally i use it all the time so just keep that in mind when you're doing digital art um and then for the gray base usually i would color this uh, like um you know like a normal skin color so right now let's just color her like that something that i would then do is make an like use another shade maybe pink or like a dark orange or something similar um and then i would have probably made like this gradient effect on the head the reason why i do this it's mainly because i just don't want it to look flat during my final rendering usually i do it so that you know it has more color has more blending techniques if it doesn't look right then i'll go over with it again with the with the blending tool it's very important to do that but actually i think you can't see that because because discord's fucking up the screen share hold on if i do this and then i do this then you can see this so slightly darker color but i think this should work better so i just make um, a light gradient above it and then i i go over with with it with like um let's say like a, a peachy brown i guess what this is what this color is um something like that just to make it not look flat and that's very important when you're working because sometimes when you're coloring or something it just looks flat when it's supposed to be three-dimensional so just keep that in mind um around this time i would have probably also colored the line art i usually color it red or something close to the skin color but for now i'll just color it red like this then i would have probably outlined the edges so this is where the clipping layer comes in i would outline the edges oh wait why is it like that i would outline the edges with the color i use to airbrush just a little bit doesn't need to be um completely saturated or shown it's just there to kind of blend in the line art with the with the skin because generally what i like doing about my final illustrations if you've seen them um the line art is not always seen that well maybe in clothes maybe in the hair but it's not so much seen as of my recent um works mainly because i don't want it to be seen so like what I would do is kind of hide that line art with shading, and I think that's a good way to do it. If you if you can't do painting, you can still do line art. But the way that you wanted to have a painting effect is by hiding that line art with your style. So if your liner is a bit too red, is a bit too off, you can always go over it again. Um, maybe add another um, layer, like duplicate the layer to make the opacity, you know, a bit better. Then just go over it. So right now it kind of looks like that. Um, it's not always going to be perfect, of course, be because this is like a speed draw anyway. So it's not going to look perfect. But if you've seen my final illustrations, that's usually how I deal with skin coloring and stuff like that. So anyway, um, next topic, something that's a bit more advanced is probably hair. So I already did a tutorial of hair on my Instagram account. So something I would always keep in note is take in mind of like the bangs, the side hairs, and then also the back hair. So when I say side hairs, I don't mean like the strands going going beside your head when you're when you have like a ponytail or something. Um, what I usually talk about is like let's say you have a ponytail. When I say side hairs, it's usually though the hair that's kind of 
um, kind of pinned down by the ponytail onto the scalp. So I'll give you a tutorial on it right now. Um, let's actually put a little reminder here on the side about the colors that I'm going to be using. So red will be front. Why is my pen dying right now? Front. So red is going to be front. Um, blue is going to be side. And then green is going to be the back hair. So it's important that if you're not familiar with hair, it's important for you to map these because if you don't, then you're going to most likely get lost. And when you get lost in hair, it might not look as natural as you want it to be. Not Maybe not make it as stylized as you want it to be. Maybe you are aiming for like a stylized style, but just because it's stylized does not mean that it shouldn't follow the rules of how like hair works unless you have like a cartoony style but for anime that's generally how it works it usually follows a certain you know a certain method so right now so let's sketch with red first let's make this um let's say this has long hair let's say this character has long hair so right now um i would be drawing in the bangs so actually i'll draw in with like a silhouette brush instead so you guys could see it better um, this one. So let's let's draw in her bangs. It doesn't need to be the complete render of what you want the bangs to look like. It's more of like the outline, the guideline of what you want the shape to be and where you want it to go. Remember, you're not supposed to always follow the guidelines because it might look stiff. It's just there to help you understand where you want things to be placed, right? So. Let's say her hair is more swept to the side. Let's say she has hair going down here by her cheeks. Then the middle part, um, the middle part would be somewhere right here, where it's like you know where her hair is just kind of resting on her scalp. Then the green part would be the long flowy hair in the back of her hair or her head. I mean, so right here, that would be your complete guideline. So you have the front, the bangs. The back, the side, which is like the the hair resting on her scalp, and then the back part, which is her long flowing hair. Um, this also applies to let's say hair that's flowing in the wind. So usually, so instead of this, well, we can make it like this instead. So make sure that it it kind of looks natural, has lots of curves because hair is not stiff. Um, you should remember that because that's, I think, a beginner artist mistake that they focus too much on, on the hair and what it looks like that it turns out stiff. And that's usually, that's understandable. That's really hard to kind of get by when you're starting out with, like, drawing humans. And the way you get past it is by letting yourself flow with the way that you draw. You just need to relax, calm yourself. You don't always need to think too hard on what to do. So I will just isolate this layer right here. So now that you have your guidelines, so her hair is flowing with the wind going this way. So that's important to note the technical aspect of what, what's happening to the hair. Like, is there wind? Is there a hat? Is, there, is she in space? Is there gravity? That's very important. Otherwise, your art might not make sense, right? So with that in mind, we'll lower the opacity here. And we'll start kind of just sketching where we want this hair to be. So the thing that you should also note when you're making your guideline is putting in the right area of like where you want the hair to start and where you want, you know, the hair to go. So right here, if you see this red outline, it's all pointing to this one area up here, including this one up here on the side. So it's all going here. And I think that you should keep that in mind because when in real life, if you study real life people, we all have this kind of like hairline and this also this also half point in our hair if you look up like our scalps and stuff like that. Um, that's usually how we know where our hair is going and where like our bangs can originate from. Like the way I have mine right now is like side bangs. So you should really keep that in mind when you're making hair. Um... Anime hair can also be like that to some extent. It's actually very important to keep that in mind because while it's stylized, it should still... Yeah, the small bald spot on top of her head, basically. That's basically what it is. It can also be a line. That depends on the person, though. 
I have a line for mine. So yeah, so even in anime, they still follow the same law of what I'm teaching. So just keep that in mind when you're making here. Um, let's make this lower opacity. It's a bit bright on my end. Okay, so right now. So coming from the side, or coming from the top and then going to the side, it's all going to basically the right. So the way I make here is more stylized rather than regular anime. Um, I'd personally suggest not to make it so sharp unless you're making like, let's say, a villain, maybe a strong character. Usually when you say fluffy, soft hair, you think of someone very bouncy, someone very childish, maybe someone very carefree. And you should keep that in mind with your character designs. Like, let's say your character is a very strong warrior, lots of muscles, lots of lots of you know like lots of combat skills and stuff like that i recommend making his hair somewhat sharp seeing that he's like let's say he it represents being him like a strong character and all that so that should be important for you to keep in mind when you're making stuff like this but this right now is more of like a bouncy bubbly character that's why majority of the hair i make is usually in like this soft style so when I make hair, I keep in mind that I don't make it stiff. I just make it flow like this. Um, you can see how I don't usually think of where I want the hair to go. If the line doesn't look right, then I erase it. But then, but then majority of the lines are usually just by my hand being carefree because that's what hair is. If you think about it too much, like let's say, let's say I want this hair to be like that, and then you're focusing too much on how you want the liner to look like or how you want how, like how these strands want to be positioned outwards it's gonna look stiff and generally hair is made a lot of strands and you need to figure it out how like um how you can make it flowy how you make it, can make it carefree but then again um, make it look natural right so right here um generally my curves or my lines are very curved in general so this is usually how I would do just basic curvy lines in here. It's very hard to explain, but it definitely depends on your style. Um, but usually for anime, when you have this type of hairstyle, it usually means the character. Like I said earlier, it's very bubbly, very carefree, um, very childish perhaps. And let's say, let's let's think about Mirai Koreyama from Kyokai no Kanata or Beyond the Boundary. Um, it's an anime. Her hair is generally very fluffy, very bouncy, short. Um, it shows that she's petite. It shows that she's shy. It can also show that um, she's not outgoing, but she ju she definitely jumps a lot when it comes to like conclusions and stuff like that. And that can show that character design. Compare that to, let's say, Mitsuki, which is one of the older upperclassmen. Mitsuki has like more straight hair, less bouncy. And it shows that she's more serious about things rather than Mirai, right? So that's very important for you to take note of. Um, so yeah, so right now, if we remove that, right now, we have this. So it might not look um, complete, yet, complete yet because, you know, it's just a sketch. And some, some parts may require some blocking, and that's okay. Um, but since, you know, this is more of like a class on how I do hair, and like how I kind of make them rather than color them. I won't really be finalizing this a lot. So now that you kind of understand how I would do the line of the hair, usually I would just flat color it with gray at this point. So yeah, so this is more of like a childish girl. Just, you know, just having flowing hair. Very, very, you know, carefree because her hair is down, let's say. Um, usually... When uh, when you're doing character design, sometimes hair that is flowing down or tied up in a high ponytail are usually the carefree characters. Characters that have short hair but is very fluffy are usually the shy ones. Um, characters that have short hair but very spiky can be like can be like outgoing ones, be social butterflies. That depends on how you in, um, how you kind of make them out to be. Usually, that's the rule I follow. I would like probably say Horimiya is a good example of that like the characters have different hairstyles that you could you could probably see Hori being more um 
more serious about things with her long hair and stuff like that. When it's high up in the ponytail, she usually takes in charge about things to do in the house, like chores. Um, compare that to her best friend with the blonde hair. I forgot her name. She's more outgoing. She's more friendly. She definitely thinks more about others before herself. So you can see that with how her hair is positioned or made in the anime. So that's something that you should keep in mind. Uh, you can see these details in other, in other things as well, like in um, proportions, like body and uh, eyes and stuff like that. You can probably see it the most in One Piece. Um, but I personally don't watch One Piece because I don't like it. Um, so yes, so I probably put the eyes above the the hair. So like, so right, right, that, right, 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 like that. I stuttered so hard on that. Oh my god. So like this, like this, like this, like this. So like this. This is how I make hair, and I probably do the blocking um, simply, basically. Um. So oh god, this is too dark. So right here would be probably the blocking. Um, generally, the back is the most dark and shaded part of the hair. Um, maybe the bit of the top will be kind of light for the you know the light spots. But generally, this is how I do hair, how I do coloring. So right here is the basic, you know, the basic way I do hair, and it's definitely not simple. I don't think hair is simple. I think hair has a lot of you know development processes that you need to go to but but once you know what you're doing once you master it it's going to be easy for you in my opinion so this is something you should always keep in mind uh don't be afraid to experiment um know where your front side and back is and also know where you want the hair to go i'll give you other styles maybe i'll do a boy version of it later or tomorrow um i'm not quite sure so other styles Let's do the same the same method as always, right? Same method as I said earlier. Um, personally, if I don't know the blocking for the hair, I would do this method because it tells you right away where, you know, where everything is going to be because how vibrant and different color the the you know, the, the colors that you choose are. So let's actually make this a ponytail. So not quite sure how to design this so let's say let's say here maybe she doesn't have a lot of bangs in the front maybe she has like these side bangs but not a lot of bangs in the front and that's fine whatever you want your character to look like and then just follow in with the back part or the the side part which is blue so oh wait that's purple that's purple there which is blue so right here um, what you should keep in mind is that when you have when you have a ponytail, all the parts of the hair are pulled to one direction, which is right here. If it's pulled to another direction, it's gonna look like it's loose. And if you want that style, that's fine. Let's say let's say the head is here. Let's say the head is here and every part of the hair goes this way. But then there's like parts that go downwards. That's fine if you want it loose. But if you want an actual tight ponytail, you're going to have to make it so that they all go to one place. And that's very important to do. Um, you might have a problem with it looking flat, and that's okay. Um, generally, ponytails are flat. However, if you don't want it to be flat, you can always make um, small bumps on her head like this to show that, yes, this is hair being pulled, and it's not a perfect ponytail. So... That's something I notice about my hair, that if it's, let's say, a messy ponytail or I didn't tie it tightly enough, usually my hair would be kind of loose on the top, but it's still pulled to that one area. So that's something you should always keep in mind. Um, next is doing the back part, which is easy. So ponytail is like this little, this little waterfall looking shape, in my opinion, or like, um, or like a horse tail or whatever you want to call it. I mean, ponytail. It's called ponytail for a reason, you know? So, yeah, just sketch it out. Um, just whatever you want it to be. Maybe add more detail to the front hair or to the, or to the side hair, whichever you prefer. As long as it looks good in your eyes, then it's fine. Um, so right now, this is what we have. So we'll work with this. So, like I said, 
guidelines are there to show you where the hair is gen uh, generally going to go. So right here, um, I kind of have it like here with like a weird hairline, and some characters are like that. Cough, cough, Sakura from Naruto. Um, so yeah, so remember that the guidelines are only there to show you where they're going to go, but you're it's on your own um, where you should put the hair strands and everything else. Um, if you follow the guidelines, like I said, it might make your artwork look stiff. It's only there to show you where things go. I will never repeat this enough. It's very important for you to know because sometimes when beginner artists' um, mistakes is that they follow the guideline too well, which makes their drawing look disform because they're only using geometric shapes. They're only there to help and guide you, not to be there f with you forever as an assistant. So that's very important for, you know, beginner artists to note. So now we have this. So it kind of looks like this right now. Um, very uh, fast sketch. Uh, like So like this, basically. Um, afterwards, I would probably just start coloring it, like always, with gray and stuff like that. Um, you don't need to color it gray. I just personally like coloring it gray because it's easier for me to see. I do it in all my drawings. Uh, we'll be deciphering or looking at one of my drawings right after this one. I'll give you an example, a better example of how I do hair. It's with like finished liner and coloring. So right here generally is how I would consider quote unquote hair being done with liner and flat coloring assuming that this rough sketch is my line art. So something like that, basically. I'll show you another ponytail example after this one. So what we have is this right here. So that's blocking finish and stuff like that. So right here is the probably the, the finished product. And uh, this is a good way for you to experiment if you're not really good at designing hairstyles. Um, I recommend looking up references as always. Me and Lumi made a 300 MB reference file on PureRef. If you want the file, then feel free to mention me. It's already pinned on Art Classroom. You just need to download PureRef, which is a free software on only PC and laptops. So if you want references, it's all there, uh, free of charge. You can just get it there as a download. Um, the next version will be coming out, w which will have around 600 photos at this point. So, so yeah, basically, if you want to get reference, that should be a good place. So if we go to here, don't mind all my drawings that are unfinished. If we go to here, um, this is a simple pro uh, project that I worked on on my own. And this is probably a good way for me to show you how I do hair and it's already finished and it's already lined with flat color. Um, sorry, it took a bit to load there. Whoa. So right here, right here is basically, um, I'm going to be outlining certain parts. So as you can see here, this is basically the same hairstyle that I did earlier as a presentation with the Haya ponytail, except you know, I have bangs here. So basically, um, what I'm trying to say is that up here is where all the hair is centered on and that's where it's all coming from. Do you see how it's like all from this one spot? It doesn't go anywhere else because that's where all the hair originates from on the bangs. And you should always note this. Um, another thing, see how it's not flat here on the sides? It's because I added like these little these little strands, this, these little loose strands and bumps. And it's not a perfect spear. And uh, when it's not a perfect spear, it makes it more look natural. Like if it's a if it's like um a complete sphere, you know how weird that would look like because it's just round. Like I think it's better if you have natural, you know, natural strands, natural loose strands, because that's really how hair works. Um for the back part, you know, it's just very simple, um, layered ponytail. When I say, oh god, ah, stream ended, no, no, Discord. Why are you doing this, Discord? Always doing this at like the worst times. How do I? I think it's not broadcasting. There you go. Okay, now it's broadcasting, I lied. Okay, Discord being poo-poo head. 
Yes, very poo poo head. Anyway, anyway, um, I'm assuming that's loaded in for people now. So yeah, so so when I say layered ponytail, usually it's a three part ponytail where I just kind of go one curve mm-hmm. above, then one another curve, and then another curve, then going down. It's kind of like a waterfall, basically. And that's usually how I do my ponytails. I think it just gives it more style. I think that's something that you should keep in mind. Um, and then for the guys, considering I don't really have a base for the guys, um, I'm going to be outlining what I know here from this artwork that I already made. So I'll, I'll go with this one first because CP's hair is really, really smooth. And it's, some, it's really straight. So this is very easy. A lot easier than, uh, let's say, curly hair or wavy hair for guys. Um, personally, I would do something similar to this hairstyle because this is the one I prefer the most on when I'm drawing guys. Um, you can see, like, majority of my guy OCs probably have hair like this similar. And it's not bad to have it, but make sure you have a variety. Even I don't really, I don't think I have enough variety in mine. So... Something to keep, uh, keep note, like I said earlier with the girl, despite him being, you know, having straight bangs going down, right? All his bangs will connect up here. You, do you see this? How it's like all originating from that one spot in the center. Because let's say, let's say, um, let's say I don't do that. Let's say there's one spot here, one spot here, and then another spot there. It's gonna look weird, right? It's gonna look like I don't have a proper place for it to go to and that shouldn't be the case because when you're making hair it's usually still fixed even if it's messy it's fixed in a sense that it comes from one area and then flows down into multiple different directions and that's something you should keep in mind when you're making hair even though it's like let's say flowy or wavy or whatever if it's curly it still follows the same fundamentals so now that you have that covered, even in the side for, let's say, CP's hair, um, see in the side right here. Actually, why did I switch to blue? I'm just going to go back to red. So you see in the sides, um, even here, it's still going to the same spot, as you can tell right here. Like, it's still generally going to the same spot, mainly because his hair is short. It's not supposed to be flowy. It's not supposed to be wavy and, or messy. His hair is short and it's straight. So, when it's like that, it usually only originates from one area. Um, even if it's wavy, it, you probably won't notice it as much, but it usually mm. follows the same fundamental. For Lumi's hair, since Lumi's hair is slightly more wavier, it's, it has a bit of um, a curl on some of the hair that I put. Curl or wave, I'm not sure, really sure how you address it. But then, the, uh, the bangs still originate from one spot here. Um, generally because when uh, when I reference a photo of him, it was coming from here, from the front. So when it's wavy, what I like to do is kind of make it more bouncy. Usually wavy hair is bouncy. Like if you, let's say, if you run and you have wavy hair, then the wavy hair kind of bounces with you, unlike straight hair, straight hair, when it like flows around and stuff like that. So hair actually it works differently depending on the style so just keep that in mind when you have like fundamentals like gravity and stuff like that implemented in so like i said lumi has wavy hair so i originated um his bangs from the center uh, and then going outwards to make it more flowy and bouncy same thing for the other side um and then in the back part i kind of made it more messy um kind of made it more curly this part i don't really have like air, an area where i want it to go to but then i kind of still made it so that they kind of go line up in the middle anyway um so yeah so generally let's say i'll give you the three styles right here so so let's say right here um right now what we have is kind of like wavy in a sense that it goes from from up here and then it's gonna flow all the way down if it's long and then we have straight hair where it just kind of 
goes down in like a straight direction regardless of where it's from then we have wavy hair where you could kind of mess around with it more but it still has direction of where you want it to go and i feel like direction is very important for people usually when you don't have direction you just kind of get lost in doing your fundamentals and that shouldn't be the case people say don't um, people say you can skip the fundamentals i don't think that's true Personally, I went to the fundamentals with my anatomy guideline, with the way I do liner right now, with the way I do clothes right now. Don't skip your fundamentals, otherwise your process for learning is going to be a lot slower. And that's something that everyone should keep in mind. If it's going to be a lot slower, then and if you want to take art seriously, that might be a problem for you in the future. So when, when you're developing a style, making, like, taking art seriously, you should always do your fundamentals. Brush up on your fundamentals. As much as you don't like them, make sure you have a good knowledge of them. Otherwise, the moment you forget, the moment you might actually forget how to do one specific thing. Like, forget how to do hair, forget how to do clothes, forget how to do anatomy. So that's very important when, um, when you're a developing artist. So I think that even, let's say, let's say, people from Riot Games who make actual, you know, professional artwork, they still do their fundamentals. They still do their blocking. They still do their anatomy sketching. Because if it's wrong, then it's going to look weird. And their product is for a commercial base. So despite them being professionals, despite them being like a level 5 artist, like majority of them, it's important to note that they still follow the rules. So with that being said... I hope that you learned something from this class. If you have any questions, anything you want me to do tomorrow besides guy hair, then I will be happy to do them. Um, I just kind of skimmed to guy hair right now, but I have to probably end the class early because my brother has a tournament that he's hosting and I want to be there to watch him. So, so yeah, so you have any questions? Any suggestions on tomorrow or next week's classes? I am open. Um, thank you. Thank you for going, actually. Yeah. I I don't know. I thought that I was this this class will be really scuffed. Not gonna lie. I, I was actually kinda worried. Because I was I didn't prepare anything the entire day. Um maybe tomorrow more hair. Yeah, I can do more hairstyles. Uh, more hairstyles, more different fundamentals, I guess. But it, all in all, what do you guys want me to teach you? Like, in terms of, like, fundamentals, easy tutorials that majority of you can understand. I want something general so that people can kind of comprehend the class more. Not, like, not overcomplicating here. I could probably do that. Feet. Oh, my God. I already got this request last time. Okay, I can do eyes. I can do eyes. I can do eyes, mouths. Um... Yeah, I can do eyes and mouths if you guys want me to. That could be for tomorrow. Hands? Okay, sure. I can probably do hands. Noses from different angles. Sure. Arms, folds. Okay, do you want me to do anatomy or do you want me to do clothes? Which one do you guys want? Anatomy or clothes? Anatomy or clothes? You, got, you have to choose. You have to choose. Anatomy. Okay, one person for anatomy. Anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. Alright, alright, okay. We'll do anatomy tomorrow. We'll do um, a recap of guy hair and girl hairstyles really quickly tomorrow. Um, we'll also be doing course anatomy, as you guys said. What specific anatomy, though? You guys have any suggestions on what specific anatomy you guys want? Like maybe hands. I can't do feet. Don't, don't tell me to do feet. Not yet. Not yet. Alien anatomy. Can't do aliens. I could probably reference toes but not feet i could probably do socks not not feet feet fuller figure anatomy like full body anatomy i'm assuming more um i could do hands could do eyes eyes is part of anatomy right so a facial anatomy i guess arm hand anatomy in different direction all right that's actually pretty good so different angle yeah yeah don't worry i got you got you so, kind of, I was talking about chubby. Like, what do you mean? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I could probably schedule that class too. 
perspective anatomy. Oh yeah, well, someone wanted me to do I forgot what it was called. Foreshortening. Yeah. I was gonna say foreshadowing. That's not foreshadowing, foreshortening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So perspective anatomy would be part of foreshortening. That would be that would be really handy. Um maybe put in some eyeball methods on eyeball. Fish eye methods. Um yeah, so I could do those. So anything else that you guys want for tomorrow? I'll be doing anatomy, perspective, hands and arms, I guess, and also hair. Expressions has to be for another day, though. Expressions is a bit hard. It's a lot harder than beginner class stuff. So yeah, so anything, anything in particular other than that stuff? I'll note them down in my schedule. Uh, remember or reminder that this class is in fact recorded so you guys can go say hi to yourselves here i'll put them on the recording yeah you can go see obs here so body nap to me i, I suffer at it. you look fat or skinny well well it kind of depends on how what you're going for you know um i'll see what i could do with that one like i'll do try i'll try to do different I try to do different um, anatomy or bodies. I, that's actually a really good challenge, and I think people should be doing that. Do you think Genesis and you can do a collab stream? <laughs> Is Genesis on Twitch? I actually don't know if, if he's on Twitch. Oh, dude. Is Genesis on Twitch? Oh, this is your first class. Well, welcome to the class. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you guys enjoy it. It's going to be, like I said, on my YouTube channel. I'll be linking it in somewhere. <laughs> I'll be linking it somewhere. Um, yeah, the first class was also recorded last week. Week when before I went absent for last week. Um, you make it look so easy. Well, I, I tried to simplify it for you guys who are beginners or like who are like trying out new things. You can announce it in announcements. Eh, hell yeah. Mod powers. Let's go. <laughs> also, what I meant by anti anti constructionism drawing, like no guidelines or anatomy stuff. Like, well, you can make it. Yeah, like, okay, hold on. Okay, I'll, I'll show you what, what, uh, what, when I um, freehand this. Maybe another class like studying art stuff. That could be a good one. Actually, that would be a, a really good one. Um, I'll probably do a collab stream with CP when I do that. Um, so here's like the simple head that I do without the guidelines. I mean, it's it's very simple. I kind of mastered it already anyway. So like right here. It's very anime, I guess. Uh, like I said, I'm always a three-fourth yeah. angle person. Maybe I'll just like, rotate it a bit. I always rotate it somewhere. I mean, like once you're once you're good at something like a certain thing, then your your skills kind of develop a lot better. This is a bit more scuff though, because I'm not taking it seriously. There you go. Uh, three fourths is actually the easiest one to do if you're not a digital artist. So yeah, uh, part of our ten minute quick draws me cp and lumi uh, we usually just do random sketches to test our skills so so right now that's a quick draw right here um like i'd say 30 second quick draw which pen do i use on i'm using procreate so this is a custom pen that i made to to copy my paint to side pens basically do you need pen pressure to make digital art? No, actually. I have a I follow okay, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm following I follow someone on TikTok. I hate myself for saying that. But I follow someone on TikTok that uses um that draws on on an iPad and they only have they only use their finger, basically. So you can in fact draw good artwork without using your pen. And that's good. Um Okay, I don't um lumi stopped lumi stopped um streaming because right now lumi's busy so he's not always available to be on this discord so yeah that's why he's not that's why we're not always here anymore you should sh usually for the people who already know us pretty well um you can see how like me 
Lumi and CP were always on cafeteria right before the server change. Um, we have a, a group chat now, so you know, so we all have our private stuff now. So we should usually we have like um, a GC to just play games together. So we don't usually go here on the server anymore. Um, so uh, anyway, I mean, let's see. Okay, I don't, I don't think I have any other questions. You guys have any other questions I could I could answer? I have like ten more minutes. I'm free to answer any question that you want. Um, to those to those who just joined, that's okay. This entire class is recorded, same thing as last last week. So if you did miss anything, it's going to be on my YouTube. Same thing for tomorrow. Um, just in case you missed any information. Is the weather good here or there? Here, yes. No, absolutely not. It's fucking terrible. Oh my god, it's so bad. Um, we are currently in the summer scheduled. We're on 32 degrees, but the real feel or the, the actual heat index is 39. So we're kind of dying right here, right now. Did you meet CP and Lumi on the server? Yes, I did. I did. I met them on the server. Um, do you use default brushes? No, I always make custom ones because the ones that are given on the program never cater to my standards. Um, CP, I met CP from the server. I met Lumi in Osu. Yes, 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 yes. So that's how we met. Um, I'm from the Philippines, so majority of my classes are 7 p.m. GNP plus 8 or Philippine time. How to fix the poses? Well, you have to do studying for that. Of course, it was Osu. Yes, yes, Lumi is so good at Osu. I wish you guys saw him stream right now. He, he his keyboard mashing is intense. Um, familiar with Ibis Paint on mobile, though. Yes, I am familiar. That's actually my first program that I did besides Autodesk Sketchbook on the iPad. So I actually do have Ibis Paint. Um, just your drawing for good poses and line of action. Well, when you study poses and you study line of action, um, it's actually available on our one ah no, it's actually available on our pure ref file. So when where will we find your white link? It's in if you go to art art fuck if you go to advertisement um self advertisement. I think that's the know. Yeah, self advertise. I suck. It's in the comments. Um, you just need to scroll down just a little bit. Um, it should be there. I got mentioned. What? Oh, right here. Oh, oh, yo! Genesis has a new video. The best tutorial ever. Yo, practice along with Senpai. Excuse me, dude. Epic. That actually happened. Yo, I want to see that. Anyway, um, where is my PRF file? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Um, anyway, so if you look at this right now, um, nah, wait, hold on. I'll remove the screen share. So I can give you a guys an example of what I'm looking at. So, okay, 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 okay. Okay, everything lagging because this is a big file. Remember, kids, take care of your RAM. Otherwise, it's gonna be really bad for your PC. Don't be like me. Okay. Um. Here. If you can see this right now, now this is in the pro all the files that me and Lumi put together into one reference board. So this is very important when you know you want all. The as you can see, I'm lagging because of how big this was. I'm not familiar how to use Ibis Paint on my phone since my phone, bleh, since my phone is screen. My phone is screen. My phone. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch syndrome. <laughs> how, okay, repeat. How to use Ibis Paint on my phone since small screen and all. Okay, oh my God, I that was so bad. Cons are reading too fast. Yes, yeah. So um. It's, I'll teach you one day, sure, why not? So, anyway, for the action lines, you can all see like that me and Lumi collected all these references that you guys could use. Like I said, pinned comment, pinned message on art classroom. It's also in 
art reference. I linked it up there somewhere. Um, these are extra 200-ish photos that will be added into the public ref folder. Right now, I'm in the Patreon folder, so there are stuff here that you guys can see. Um, line of action and other stuff like that. I think it's important to note that you probably... Where is it? Oh my god. I organized this, but I don't even know where it is. I suck at this, dude. Um, when you say line of action, generally, when you have references up, it already kind of shows you where your line of action is. Usually, it's like an S symbol, and I think that's very important. 